per cinque inverni ti sei nascosto al mondo. Un tempo eri un grande guerriero. Farò di te di nuovo un guerriero. Come? Col duro addestramento. Rendendo duro ciò che è molle. La mente deve essere padrona del corpo. Maestro, qual è il mio destino? L'MI7 ti vuole sul primo volo per Londra. Solo allora potrei dirti rinato. English. Tranquillo. Potete contare su di me. Go! Mazza, signore. Non ne saprò molto di golf, Tucker, ma so come si impugna un perno. Ah! Queste chiacchiere sono di importanza mondiale. Gli stati canaglia del sud-est asiatico stanno segretamente sviluppando un'arma nucleare. È vitale avere la Cina dalla nostra. English. Datemi 24 ore. Johnny English, la rinascita. uscirà in 400 copie, quindi una città molto, molto importante, wild, e eh, che questa conferenza stampa è in streaming in questo momento su Coming Soon, che ci sta guardando, e poi sarà replicata su eh, domenica che sarà anche sul canale, poi la sarebbe, non ci sono grandi rischi. Allora io volevo partire da, questo è un film molto molto divertente, ma se nel primo film c'era James Bond, questa volta c'è Jason Barron, come protagonista, quanto la divertita prendere in giro questo nuovo modo di concepire gli agenti segreti? Uh, well, making, yeah, I mean, it's rather fun. Um, I mean, the world of James Bond, which is adapted the world of Johnny English, uh, is a very fruitful world for comedy because it's a world that the cinema audience know extremely well. And they, um, uh, and, you know, that was, you know, you know, the world in which we set the first uh, John English movie, the same. And, uh, and it's curious that this year there seem to be no Jason Bourne movies and no James, Jack, James Bond movies, although that's largely coincidence. But it's quite good for us, or at least I'm told it's quite good for us, that, you know, that the, that the, the espionage landscape is relatively... Empty. Are you translating it at the same time? Are you going to Okay. Um, uh, so do you want me to stop? No, no. Okay. okay. Um, uh, but yes, so, so yes, it is what it is. It's, uh, it's, it's a comedy spy movie. There's no doubt that the Jason Bourne movies in particular, I think, have redefined the spy landscape in to a significant degree, which is why James Bond movies are now you know, different to what they were. They're a little harder, a little more humorless in a way, which is quite good for us, because I feel that now that James Bond has gone a bit more serious, it means it's, op it's opened up an arena you know, for us, um, for, for Johnny English, um, to, be, you know, to be the slightly more comedy orientated, slightly more witty spy movie. In many ways, I feel that particularly this new John English movie on which we've spent more money, it's a bit you know, bigger and more glamorous, I think, it's, I think it's more like a James Bond movie from 10 or 15 years ago. 
Ecco, l'ufficio stampa di Universal mi segnala che la, siamo in un caso in cui la vita imita l'arte. Se vuole la sede, se vuole alzare, se vuole la scena del film, 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 c'è un microfono? Sì, adesso arriverà, sta, sta arrivando, non, non penso che non lo stiamo conservando, prego, alla signora che si vede rosso, quindi prima fila che lavora per la radio Svizzera anche, quindi suppongo che ci sia una domanda relativa, no, una battuta, no, legata no. a perché morire dagli svizzeri. No, 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 no. no. Eh, so che è già stato a Zurigo, quindi non c'è nessun problema, io ero a Zurigo, ok. Eh, allora, io yes, yes. Eh, no, eh, quello che volevo chiedere è un'altra cosa. Lei ha parlato del panorama delle spie e eh, mi è venuto in mente la gente smart eh, e altre varie prese in giro degli agenti segreti, però mi sembra che questa sua presa in giro sia più delle persone normali che non veramente degli agenti segreti. Il suo Johnny English fallisce eh, più come persona normale che non come agente segreto, per esempio riesce a fare delle mosse di Kung Fu e varie cose molto bene, quindi mentre, Johnny, mentre la gente smart non sapeva neanche da che parte cominciare. Quindi la vedo più come una presa in giro delle persone normali così che lo spettatore si può immedesimare molto di più e non si annoia nel vedere un imbaranato totale. È così, è questa la psicologia del personaggio. Okay, yeah, I, I hope I'm interpreting the translation correctly. Um, uh, yes, I mean, what's interesting to me about Johnny English um, is that in many ways he's a more believable character than James Bond, because James Bond is sort of Superman, he, you, know, you know, to whom you know, he, 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 he has his problems, but he almost has, you know, uh, superpowers to overcome them, whereas Johnny English is more human. Uh, you feel as though he's not a natural spy. You feel as though he has to try very hard in order to succeed in the, in the world of espionage that he's chosen to work. Uh, you feel as though he's quite lucky to be there. And you feel as though he has to fight quite strongly in order to justify his position and the faith that other people have in him. I mean, generally speaking, with this second John English movie, which personally I believe to be significantly better than the first John English movie, Better because I think the character of Johnny English is more believable. I think he's more three-dimensional. Uh, and as you say, he has failings and flaws. And of course, it's those flaws that we exploit for comedy. You know, the joke is that he's not as good as he thinks he is. That's the essential joke about Johnny English. And, um, uh, and we exploit that to the full. But, you know, but in many ways, as you say, that makes him more identifiable by an ordinary person because ordinary people actually, you know, quite frequently are not as good as, are not as good at their jobs as they would like to be. Uh, and that's certainly the case with Johnny English. So I, so I can see what you mean. But I think it all feeds into our desire with this new movie of, of a greater reality. You know, you know, this is not Austin Powers. You know, this is not a spy spoof, a spy parody in its pure form. It's more a comedy thriller, that's kind of what we tried to make, you know, we tried to devise a story in which you were interested, in which you were interested to know what happened next, rather than just waiting uh, for the next joke, uh, which is why we have cast it, as we have cast it, with people like Dominic West and Rosamund Pike and Gillian Anderson, these are very good, very serious actors, and we wanted that, we wanted to cast it as if we were casting a James Bond movie, and then let the silliness the joke of Johnny English be a greater contrast, if you like, you know, I think the jokes are bigger and better if they're set in a more serious world. Ecco, Rosa Montpai, a Venezia, eh, l'anno scorso, hai appena finito di girare con lei, ha parlato della sua grande generosità, diceva, chi lavora con Mr. Atkinson non è eh, intimidito, però è molto generoso, e soprattutto lo, lo aiuta, è aiutato a entrare nei suoi tempi, perché lei è un maestro, sia della commedia verbale, che la commedia fisica. Ecco, riconosce insomma, questo fatto di riuscire a non far intimidire le persone che lavorano con lei, anche attori di esperienza, ma no, Rosan Pai non aveva mai fatto una commedia certamente come questa. Uh, well, it's a nice thought. It's probably for others to judge. 
my generosity rather than me, it's, it's sort of not for me to say. But um, I'm a great believer that, you know, that, you know, that, that the nature of acting is that all we are ever trying to do is to tell the story. Uh, and if, as a performer, you are greedy or ungenerous, mm -hmm. then it's going to disadvantage you as much as it is your fellow performer. Um, uh, I remember talking to an actor who said, you know, I always like to be in movies or plays where I'm the only good actor. You know, I love to be amongst people who aren't very good and then my talents shine out more brightly in contrast to them. Uh, and I hated to tell him that that was not the way storytelling, that's not the way drama works. You know, drama is about trying to present a truth. Um, and the important thing is that everyone contributes everything they can from, from the perspective of their own characters to that truth and to make the drama work. You know, I don't want to work with people who aren't good. I don't want to work with people who are not given free reign and the proper amount of oxygen, if you like, to make their performances work, because that will benefit ev ev everybody. Um, if, if people, you know, perceive that generosity, then I, then, then I think that's good, but it's something uh, which I believe wholeheartedly. Sì, volevo chiederle se lei è, è stato, è un ammiratore dei film di James Bond, e in particolare di quali, non so, di quelli con classici, primi con Sean Connery, oppure Roger Moore, uh, Pierce Brosnan, e se in qualche modo ha, ha pensato in particolare a qualcuno di questi. Grazie. Uh, yes, I always felt that the first Johnny English was quite like a Roger Moore, James Bond movie, uh, with more jokes. Uh, there's something about the character of Roger Moore as James Bond, which is a little bit like Johnny English, you know, that's, you know, that raised eyebrow and the smugness and the, you know, the sort of, you know, louche kind of British gentleman uh, on the loose, uh, which I think there are... I think Johnny English has probably fashioned himself slightly on Roger Moore uh, as James Bond. My personal likes are probably, you identify correctly, are probably somewhere between Sean Connery and Pierce Brosnan. Although Daniel Craig has been very good, I think, in redefining the James Bond genre. I didn't see Quantum of Solace, so I don't know what that is like, uh, but I enjoyed Casino, Casino Royale very much, which well, it was a little bit of a return to almost the early Sean Connery movies in terms of its tone and style, and that was very good. Um, but I mean, I mean, James Bond is an inspiration. It's, it's bound to have been an inspiration for me and for us because I think every boy wants to be in the world of James Bond. Every man would like to be James Bond. You know, that is the nature of James Bond. Um, uh, and I think, and that's, I think what's funny about Johnny English really is that you feel you know, you feel he's a fan. You know, you can sense his sort of slightly amateur, um, sort of boyish enthusiasm for the world that he inhabits. Um, and of course, it's the fact that he's not a natural, as I said earlier, uh, is the, you know, which means that he doesn't, he's not wholly qualified to fulfill the role he fulfills, but that is part of his joke. You have a colleague that you want to answer the man, Prego. Eh, signora, sempre interpretato da parte del buono, mi piace anche interpretare un criminale o da parte di, di, comunque, di un cattivo in generale? <laughs> well, traditionally, there is a good market in Hollywood for British actors as bad guys. So I suppose, you know, there's always, there's always the possibility. I think I may have spoiled my pitch somewhat. Uh, by playing Mr. Bean, because I think the very nature of Mr. Bean as, you know, as a silly sort of childish character, um, sometimes I think will always make it difficult for film producers and directors to cast me in films of a more serious tone. Because as, you know, as an actor, I bring a lot of baggage with me, uh, and mainly you know, Mr. Bean baggage. Uh, and that's absolutely fine, and you know, I've got used to that idea. But I'd be happy, and I mean, in fact, funny enough, an early draft of this new John English movie had me playing my own cousin 
as the villain. So there was Johnny English, and there was Johnny English's cousin was a bad guy. Um, and I was going to play both uh, roles, um, which I thought was quite a funny idea, actually. And, but I'm, I'm someone who is reluctant, unlike Mike Myers, for example, who makes a speciality of it. Unlike Mike Myers, I always feel very nervous about playing two roles in one movie. I, um, it's technically difficult, and I feel as though sometimes all your, you know, in terms of presenting, you know, which again was our aim, uh, a serious story, a believable story. I think when one actor is starting to play two roles, what you're looking for is, when you're watching it as a spectator, is how they've cheated it, you know, how technically they've got this to work. And, you know, you know, you're looking for this, for the dividing line down the middle of the screen where the two bits of the, uh, the shot have been put together in order to present two characters played by one actor at the same time. So I, I've, never, I've never fancied it as a sort of, uh, you know, films as showreels, really, you know, trying to show how versatile you are, but I've never felt the need for that. Abbiamo due domande lì, il primo è Roberto Belfrigio, io mi permetto di ricordare anche che però Miss Raffinson, credo che Cad abbia dato la prova delle più grandi cattiverie che esistono allo schermo, quindi per me lui è un eroe solo a pensare come trattava il povero se vuoi interlocutori in alcune situazioni. Allora, guarda, allora, mia è una personale cur 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 curiosità, cioè poi si è trovato a scorazzare con una ca carzella a 40-50 all'ora, visto che l'ha fatto in prima persona nonostante le perplessità della produzione. E poi sempre sapere se ha provato la personalmente la Rolls Royce modificata magari su, su un circuito, visto che questa lei è appassionata di auto. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. This is clearly the car question. Um, <laughs> it's a good question um, because, as you know, I'm a great lover of motor cars and, uh, and motor racing. Um, uh, firstly, with the Rolls Royce, I, I, I was very keen to have a different kind of, of, of sort of glamorous English spy vehicle. I felt that Aston Martin, even though we'd used it in the first movie, and of course it's in all the James Bond movies, Aston Martins, I felt that it's been a little bit overused, become a little bit of a cliche, and I fancy doing something a bit different. I had some very good experiences personally with the Rolls-Royce Phantom, so, um, and I also knew one, one very important uh, piece of information, which was that Rolls-Royce had developed this ridiculous engine, a 9-litre V16 engine, a 16-cylinder engine for the Rolls-Royce Phantom, but had chosen never to use it. But I knew that this engine was sitting in a warehouse in Munich somewhere, and I asked Rolls-Royce if they would, because, you know, it's always nice with a spy car to have something special, a USP, in there. And I asked if they'd get this, this 9-litre V16 engine out of storage and put it in our Johnny English Phantom, our two-door Phantom. Uh, and very sweetly, Rolls-Royce agreed. And like me, they wanted it to be a real car that really worked. So it is a real car that really works. So uh, I've taken it to a couple of uh, premieres actually earlier this week. I haven't got it here today, sadly. But uh, it, it, it is a real car and it does work. Uh, and you know, and I think it, I think it's a good looking car in the film actually. I, I, I think it's a very suitable car. Perhaps it's slightly reflecting <laughs> Johnny English's new maturity. You know, a slightly softer, slightly more older image. Um, uh, the second thing about a wheelchair, yeah, the other thing was that, you know, you, you feel as though you've always got to have a car chase in a spy movie, and I like the idea of a car chase with a difference, so we came up with the idea of one of the cars being a wheelchair, but a special high-powered wheelchair that had been developed by the British Secret Service, uh, and it was a great toy, it was an amazing thing, we had three different ones for different speeds, two electric and one uh, powered by a go-kart, a go-kart engine, which was the fastest one, um, uh, which I drove on the Mall in front of Buckingham Palace there, and it did go 35 or 40 miles an hour, 60, 60 kilometers per hour, um, and 60 kilometers per hour, you know, may not sound fast, but in a wheelchair, I can promise you, it's very, very fast indeed, uh, because the center of gravity of a wheelchair is extremely high, and the likelihood of you of you tipping over is extremely high. Um, but and even though I'm not, not every single shot in the sequence is me, but but all, but all the high speed stuff, as it happens, is me, the stuff that, that when the chair is going at its fastest. And it was good fun. Simone Vario Godica Network. Uh yo, da quello che ho percepito data da sottotitolare nascita, volevo sapere appunto se il film, visto che l'ho 
eh, percepito come un episodio a sé stante rispetto al precedente. Volevo sapere appunto se si trattava semplicemente, come poi ha detto Mr. Atkinson, di un'evoluzione, di raccontare l'evoluzione del personaggio o di un secolo effettivo. E visto che lei ogni volta studia a fondo i suoi personaggi, appunto, se hanno avvenuto qualcosa del vecchio John English oppure l'ha rimodellato completamente, insomma. Grazie. Uh, I think there's plenty about the old Johnny English in the new Johnny English. I hope, as you say, uh, he's, he's, he's an evolution rather than a revolution. Uh, I, you know, the essential joke of Johnny English is still there. Uh, the fact that he's not as good as he thinks he is. You know, the fact that he overreaches himself. The fact that his ambition is greater than his skill. You know, Johnny English thinks he's this good, when in fact he's only this good. And it's in that gap but between the two, which is where our jokes uh, lie. Um, the, but we have, we've just in this new movie, just tried to challenge him more as a character, given him more light and shade, given him more serious scenes. I see that, you know, there's a sort of gravitas to John English sometimes in the new movie, which I think is enjoyable. <coughs> and as I say, it just feeds this whole idea of making our narrative more believable uh, and more enjoyable. Um, I hope, yeah, I, I don't think he's radically different. And of course also actually giving him, uh, showing the courage of him has been very important. Because even though he's a little bit of a fool, he's not a total fool. You know, he's actually quite good at being a secret agent. And he's surprisingly brave, surprisingly determined. So, you know, he won't stop until the job is done. You know, he's definitely not a coward. Uh, and that, I think, is quite endearing. I think endears, I think the character endears himself to the audience more in the new movie than in the old one. And this, and this is simply by virtue of what we get him to do and the situations in which we've decided to place him. So I think he has changed, um, but I think he is built on, on pretty firm foundations from the, from the first movie. Sì, buongiorno. Io volevo mi curiosità sapere se lei rivede i suoi film e se si diverte a vederli con i suoi figli in famiglia e quale ti delle sue numerosissime performance esilaranti ama di più. Qual è il film poi la commedia del cinema in assoluto che di più le rimasta nel cuore? E ancora una piccola domanda che riguarda c'è un pizzico di Mr. Bean o di Johnny English? nell'originale Roman Atkinson nella vita di tutti i giorni. Grazie. Uh, ok, yes, yes, I've just got, got to try to remember the questions now in order. Uh, firstly, in terms of watching films that I've made, uh, no, I don't watch films that I've made, uh, but the problem, but the point is, of course, that when I am making movies, I, um, I'm involved with every part of the process, so I sit, I'm sitting throughout the editing process of the movie, for example, which takes five or six months, so I see the film hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, so I watch myself then, and I watch it with ease and with a relaxation, actually, that I'm, I'm quite happy to watch myself, because I totally divorce myself from the character on the screen. Uh, people are always surprised, the directors, when I'm editing with them, that I always refer to myself in the third person. You know, that I say, you know, is there a moment when he, he goes through, through the door later than in the cup that we've got at the moment, rather than when I go through the door later. I never refer to myself in the first person, it's always the third person. And this, it, and I don't have to do that deliberately, that is just, you know, naturally how I see myself. I don't, it's not me up there, it's a character. Uh, and that is how I, you know, view the editing process. Once the film is made, I go to endless premieres, so I see the film a lot then, but I would never sit down voluntarily myself to watch a film. Uh, and certainly if it comes on, if I'm at a friend's house and a film of mine is suddenly on TV, I, I will leave the room <laughs> rather than enter the room. There's no doubt about that. Um, and and, and, and even, you know, when I talk now, <laughs> it's a, you know, comparisons are quite often being drawn to the first movie, and I have to confess I haven't seen the first movie for six years or something, I can't remember the last time I saw it. Um, and, you know, and I'm trying to compare it to how I remember the film rather than maybe how the film actually is. Uh, what, what was the, uh, the, the, comedy, uh, the comedy of your... The, the best comedy. The best comedy. All oh, right. 
Oh, well, this is very difficult. Um, I, uh, you know, an inspiration for me was always, you know, Monsieur Hulot's Holiday, La, Les Vacances de Monsieur Hulot, the Jacques Tati movie, that I think is a definitive uh, movie in my life. Um, uh, there's a movie I saw only a few weeks ago that I hadn't seen for years, which I'd forgotten how good it was, so I'll mention it now, which was a Michael Caine and Steve Martin movie called Dirty Rotten That's Scandals. Fun. I don't know if it was released here or what it was called. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it, was, uh, it was about two con men on the, on the coast of Europe. And, um, and God, that's got some funny, it, it's not a, a consistently funny movie, but there are some two scenes with Steve Martin in, one when he's trying to remember somebody's name that he's forgotten when he's in jail. If he remembers the name, it'll help him to get out of jail, but he can't remember the name. It's a terribly funny scene. There's just lots of funny stuff in it. But, yeah, so there are two that, are, you know, that spring from the top of my head. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's bound to be some. Um, uh, I mean, Mr. Bean, I sometimes think, is a little bit like I was when I was 10. <laughs> well, when I was 10 years old, you know, the joke of Mr. Bean is that he's an adult, is that he's a child trapped in an adult's body. Uh, so, yeah, me as a child, you know, could, there could be a little bit of him. In me, um, I hope there's very little of him as an adult because I, I mean, I mean, Mr. Bean is a, you know, I maintain a, quite an unpleasant <laughs> character, really selfish child. Um, Johnny English, I don't know. I, I, I hope I've got his good bits and none of his bad bits. That I suppose is probably some rest, you know. But I don't think actually I'm as brave as he is, uh, and I don't think um, I'm as self-deluded as he is, so, <laughs> so maybe I fail on both fronts, but, but, but that thing, but there's a strange parallel, I think, between Johnny English's ambition to be a spy and Rowan Atkinson's ambition to play a spy, you know, there's a sort of, a, you know, both of us, you know, I could never be a spy, really, <laughs> but I can act. I can act the past, but I, I could not be. And I feel as though there's a slight parallel with Johnny English that he's not really a very good spy, but he's determined to look like one. Buongiorno, eh, due domande veloci, ci provo. Eh, in un momento di crisi generale come questo, per un attore brillante come lei, Giulia, uno dei maggiori attori brillanti della sua generazione, è più facile o più difficile far ridere, costruire un film che porti molto pubblico al cinema? E poi... Aspetta, ti lascio il microfono, okay. facciamo un po' Well, I don't know. We'll have to see how you know how the release of our movie works. If people come to see it and if they enjoy it or not. I mean, the science so far has been very good in the few territories in which it has been released. Uh, I'm a great believer that you know that escapist comedy movies, uh, in theory, could be a very pleasing and welcome antidote to the difficulties of everyday life. Um, traditionally. When people, for example, are trying to cut down on expenditure, frequently the last thing they cut down on is entertainment. Uh, is frequently that's what you know. Sometimes people's last euro will be will be spent on a cinema ticket. Um, I mean, you know, you know, maybe their last euro would, would be spent on a loaf of bread, but 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 maybe their second to last euro may be spent. Uh, it's surprisingly likely to be spent. Uh, you know, going to the cinema or, or buying a DVD or going to a rock concert or something, because in the end, you know, we need, we need entertainment. So I'm certainly not worried about it from a commercial point of view. Um, I certainly haven't set myself a mission to keep people happy in these difficult times. It's just a coincidence that our film is coming out uh, at a difficult time, and if it provides some relief um, from the difficulties and travails of everyday life, then that's all to the good. Siccome lei conosce, credo, un po' anche la realtà italiana, perché è venuto qui spesso in vacanza, c'è qualche aspetto, qualche personaggio, soprattutto ultimamente della realtà italiana che trova particolarmente comico? Oh. 
Um, uh, dear me, I, I, don't, I don't really know Italy well enough to, to pass a comment. Uh, I did come here earlier this year. I did the Mia Emilia retrospective um, from Brescia to Rome and back again, uh, which I enjoyed hugely. Uh, and what I do enjoy very much, which is not a particularly comic aspect of you, although it appears comic probably from a British perspective, um, is the, uh, the healthy flexibility, I would say, you have towards the nature of driving uh, and how cars should be and how roads should be. I enjoy the fact that you have a, you know, a very singular attitude, which is, let's say, you know, not German. Uh, it's, not, it's not even French and it's certainly not British. Uh, it's very Italian. Uh, and I enjoy your enthusiasm for motor cars um, and I enjoy your, you know, you know, your attitude towards driving and what should be allowed and what should not be allowed. So, um, which, which is why, you know, if anyone ever asks me in Britain, is there anywhere in the world where you can drive cars with spirit and vivacity, then I tend to say, well, you could try Italy. E dopo questa rivelazione, da un esperto di auto, da un grandissimo talento, un grande artista, noi che abbiamo visto di Roma Arti, sono prestato con noi e ricordo che il giorno di invece la rinascita ci dà il nostro